President Biden is expected to leave the White House any moment now. He'll fly to Belfast, Northern Ireland, five-day trip on the, the island of the Saw. Dana, audible groans from the White House, however, when the press secretary said the president would not hold a news conference when he's in Ireland. Ridiculous. Uh, then there was this exchange. Give it a listen. Why the lack of any interaction in a formal setting to have a press conference? Uh, I mean, the president takes shouted questions. This is not the norm. So I'll say this. It is also unprecedented that a president takes as many shouted questions as this president has. And he no, has. No, 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 no. Okay. Almost every day. I mean, look. If they ain't buying it, <laughs> I'm not buying it. No one's buying it. <laughs> Carl, how you doing? Carl Rove with us now. I would think when, if you go to Ireland today, they still have bars named after Kennedy from his visit in the 1960s. If you're an American president, this is the country you go to to feel good, right? Whether it was Kennedy, whether it was Reagan, whether it was Obama, um, if you're going to meet a friendly audience. Ireland's your place, Carl. Well, except the friendly audience would be the U.S. press corps, which is not all that friendly given how they've been treated. I mean, this was the worst performance since Sean Spicer said that the largest audience, the largest crowd in history was present for uh, Donald Trump's inauguration. And, uh, you know, this was dreadful. I mean, the, the, look, he's going abroad. He's going to be in Ireland. There are important issues there. One of the, the ten, he's going there to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the accord that brought peace to, uh, to Ireland, to the island of Ireland, between Northern Ireland and the, and the country of Ireland. But there are problems with it. And he is meeting with all five parties. People would like to know what he's thinking about it. We have a massive leak of U.S. intelligence, which has grave ramifications for our national security and for the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. And people want to find out where the president is on it. He, t t taking shouted questions? Oh, come on, please. Uh, you know, that ain't the way to conduct the business of the presidency of the United States. And it's strange, and, there, and it leads us to wonder why. And I think I know why. They don't want to put him in that setting because it would show that he is his age is showing and he's not able to handle that kind of a, a kind of a pressure, particularly when he's on a foreign trip and sort of out of kilter because of the difference in time zones, about five hours difference between Washington and, and Ireland. Also, okay, so just take a look at this, and these numbers won't be a surprise to you. This is the number of press conferences that past presidents had had at this point in their presidency. Uh, he's way down at 23. Everybody else was up 41. Bill Clinton at 92, which is pretty hilarious anyway. But to her point about the, that he takes shouted questions, like if the White House press secretary and the comms team there thinks that that's effective communication, they ought to be on this side and listening in because you can't hear the president especially when he's trying to do it as Marine One is gearing up to take him to Andrews. You, ca you can't understand anything that he's saying. So even if he is taking shouted questions, they're bearing it. My second point is, what about a return to norms? I thought we were going to go return to normal. And the normal thing is, when a president goes on a foreign trip or invites a foreign leader to the White House, he takes two questions. They take two questions apiece. And I don't understand. I, I understand the White House press corps is frustrated, but they are not raising the ruckus that I would expect. Yeah. No, I think you make two excellent points. Let me augment the first point. We, we don't see a lot of these that a lot of the shouted questions turn into a brief paragraph in a print article, but they don't turn into to live television for exactly the reasons you talk about. And also because in most instances, the president's response needs to be cleaned up by by the by, by the White House press uh, uh, operation, take even the conversation he had with Al Royker, in which he says, "Well, I'm planning to run." Well, th that's th th he has had so few news conferences, and he has not addressed issues uh, so f infrequently. He's addressed them so infrequently that that suddenly that becomes a, a bit of news, and the White House has to say, "Well, you know, that was not a formal declaration of any kind." Blah 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 mm -hmm. blah blah. So. Yeah, I, I agree with you. He would be better off, the country would be better off uh, by him having regular news conferences. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he doesn't have them and that it's not normal for him to do what he's doing raises questions as to why. And we have to end up with one thing, which is he is surrounded by people who don't think he's up for the normal process of being president. And that's troublesome for the so country. So you're saying it's a competency issue? Um, yeah, oh, okay. sure. Maybe they're worried that's about it. it. Maybe, maybe, sorry, Carl. Maybe that's it, or maybe they're running from something. 
Fox Digital just posted a story an hour ago. Hunter Biden's business partners and assistants visited the White House more than 80 times while he was vice president. That's something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, they don't want him to answer tough questions. I mean, you know, just think about the current controversies. That's one item. But think about what's been dominating the news the last couple of days, the leak of, uh, of, of U.S. intelligence reports. Maybe they, they're worried about him handling even things like that that are that are you know, sort of a, a moment of crisis that every president has to deal with. Uh, you know, what are they afraid of him having a news conference in, in Ireland about? It, you know, he's going to be talking with the five parties, trying to, to, to uh, you know, re-energize mm -hmm. support for the, for the peace agreement. But why aren't we hearing him do that publicly? I think it's because mm -hmm. they're worried about what the president might it's say good. and how he might handle it and how it might not impact good. people. It's not right and it's not, not good. good, indeed. Carl Rove, thank you. Good to thank see you. Thank you, Carl. You bet. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.